Yeah, I will just um, present an overview of a recent project, uh, reflections and concerns uh, regarding uh, mainly uh, the idea of um, uh, technological innovation um, taken as a sort of uh, a propaganda or as a sort of um, a dominant ideology in um, the, 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 the making of our current uh, society and uh, value systems. So, uh, this innovation is a, is a group. Um, we started um, like four or five years ago. Um, basically, uh, we, we are through artworks, but also through um, publications, um, festivals, and um, different gathering events. Uh, we, we try to investigate this specific angle. So basically, um, <clears throat> we all come from a um, kind of a media art background. And at some point, uh, we kind of figured out uh, that as uh, artists, as uh, makers, as, um, uh, let's say, as proxy of validation uh, of the technological artifacts that you will stage, in an exhibition, uh, we had to develop a form of uh, specific consciousness and specific um, position, posture, position uh, toward um, the technological devices that we were using. Um, in the sense that um, in the larger ecosystem, in the larger uh, dynamic uh, of um, uh, technological innovation, uh, media arts, uh, becomes a, a sort of an extended public relation, um, a cog in, the, in this system, in this larger system of, of public relations. So for instance, you can see uh, um, most of the, the um, uh, art funds coming from companies and most of the artists in residence coming from companies uh, depend on the public relation uh, uh, division, for instance, right? And uh, actually, artists are, have a strong uh, position in the society as uh, by uh, staging and dra dramatizing uh, technology, technological artifacts, uh, they are uh, becoming actor in a larger process of uh, yeah, dissemination, validation, popularization of those same artifacts. So it, it became clear to us that that was a point that we wanted to investigate and we we didn't want it anymore uh, to just uh, use, stage, and validate those artifacts and um, somehow um, propagate this uh, um, positivist um, approach toward uh, technological innovation and more largely this uh, techno neoliberalism, uh, which is somehow validated through uh, those technologies. Um, so, those uh, practices are developed uh, through, uh, de depending on the topic and the, the angles, uh, it can be uh, developed through uh, festivals and group exhibitions, also through um, publications, so I will come back to uh, the pirate book that is exhibited here. And, um, yeah, basically, it, um, I will just make a focus to, 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 so that you see the, the development a little bit. It started with uh, an exploration of uh, what we could call um, black box technologies. Um, and the idea that uh, the technology we are using on a daily basis are acting and shaping our, um, our views, our um, types of relation, and our, our system of values. And we uh, hardly understand them and hardly even uh, experience them uh, from the inner walking and, and their specific uh, dynamics system uh, logic. Uh, and the, the, the ideas through those early works were really to um, investigate uh, those spaces of black boxes and to find ways really um, direct and uh, material ways to uh, um, materialize uh, those black boxes. So this first project, uh, the, the pirate cinema, is uh, basically, you could see it as a kind of a monitoring uh, room, a surveillance room. Um, it's using um, a sort of uh, uh, weakness by design of the BitTorrent protocol, which is uh, that any user on the network needs to know uh, the IP address of the user it's exchanging with. So we've been using this um, feature, which is uh, what has been used uh, for 15 years by 
all the surveillance uh, companies uh, that were uh, either uh, feeling um, uh, copyright um, infringement um, uh, lawsuits or um, universities that were studying peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. So we used exactly the same feature, but to reveal uh, the dynamics and the materiality of uh, those exchanges. What you can see here is um, the real-time process of um, users uh, consuming uh, those contents or receiving those contents or on personal issues. So basically, we uh, set it up a um, server that synchronizes, that synchronizes itself every day with the top 100 most downloaded uh, torrents based on the, the list uh, from the Pirate Bay. And uh, this server becomes a node, but a very accessible node on the network. Uh, and it's uh, very likely that uh, some of your packets will go through uh, this node. So what you see is uh, the process of the BitTorrent peer-to-peer uh, -peer network through one big node. And you have also the IP address and the um, um, geographical uh, origin and destination of each uh, peer. And um, basically, wh while uh, developing and presenting this project, uh, we've been uh, collecting uh, so many stories, anecdotes, uh, historical facts, and um, artifacts around uh, the practices of uh, media piracy all over the world that we decided to compile it uh, through a, a sort of a book, which is not an academic book, but more like maybe um, a book uh, looking at media piracy from uh, the perspective um, of uh, the practices, um, the strategies, and the tactics developed. So basically, um, the idea that is developed through the book is really this idea of um, what we call the, the piracy of necessity. It's uh, when um, piratical practices are developed uh, because the original content is either hard to access or unavailable for political, uh, religious re reasons, for geogra geographical reasons, economical reasons, and so on. So this book uh, compiled both historical uh, anecdotes and also contemporary uh, practices all over the globe um, that kind of relate uh, to the production of content and to the consummation of content uh, in different ways. Today I wanted to, to focus more precisely on the idea of uh, technocritics. Uh, because that's more the, the, the sort of uh, black boxes that we are exploring at the moment with the, the collective. Um, so, in French, technocritic has maybe a slightly different uh, sense, but uh, <clears throat> it's maybe not that far from the American sense. Uh, it's this idea of a critical theory that will be applied to, to the field of technological changes. But uh, more clearly, uh, that will investigate um, not only uh, the economical or positivist uh, uh, bias, but also the long-term and the global scale uh, effects of it, and uh, perhaps also the different geographical perception and um, uh, repercussions of it. Uh, so the first project um, I'd like to present in this uh, series. Mode Prey Center, Disnovation Org V3 Gray Area, Google Slides. This acknowledgement of powerlessness before the upsurge of unexpected, catastrophic events forces us to reverse the usual trend which exposes us to accidents and inaugurate a new kind of museology and museography, one which consists in exposing or exhibiting the accident, all accidents, from the most commonplace to the most tragic, from natural catastrophes to industrial and scientific disasters, 
including also the kind that is too often neglected, the happy accident, the stroke of luck, the coup de fauder or even the coup de grace, Paul Virilio. So uh, this first project uh, I will present um, somehow uh, resonates very well with this quote. Um, the idea was really to uh, think about what will be um, uh, a tactic to um, somehow uh, challenge or confront uh, the clear positivist bias that we can have today uh, toward technological innovation. So somehow uh, we wanted to start collectively to compile and um, uh, assemble uh, what would be a museum focusing specially on failures, on um, disasters, on uh, catastrophes, on uh, bugs. and. Everything that is uh, underrepresented uh, in the dominant discourses around technology. So we started to develop it through uh, workshops, performative events, uh, database, and a compilation of uh, stories and anecdotes. So it's an ongoing project. Uh, this is the groundbreaking ceremony uh, where we did this uh, symbolic um, ritual. Um, this is one early form of uh, this uh, collective con contribution. So each of uh, the drawer is like a virtual floor. floor. The floor are counted only on negative order, uh, from minus one to minus x. Uh, so, so far you have like, one floor about intentional failures. The second underground floor is about fiction, dystopias, uh, and human aspirations. The third floor is about risk, speculative risk and disasters. And the floor number four is about unexpected and unplanned outcomes. So here you can yeah, see the database and um, the kind of anecdotes that could be compiled there. This one, I like it spe specifically because uh, in every uh, futurist talk uh, coming from the um, transhumanist uh, side or even from most of the really positivist um, Silicon Valley, Valley talk, you, you will at some point base your, um, your discourse on this uh, law. And this law is not a law. It's uh, just a um, self-fulfilling uh, uh, sort of prophecy where uh, some uh, people from Intel decided at some point that that's the way that the market will be regulated. So that, that can be the kind of tactical stories that can be uh, exposed and uh, somehow challenged through such a museum. This next piece is a, uh, here is a video piece, but it's actually um, a, a KML trajectory. So it's a traje trajectory through Google, Google Earth. And we were interested in how uh, most of the technology we use daily are dire directly coming from the military. And um, we started to um, investigate a, a series of projects where we will come and uh, hunt or uh, bring some kind of uh, uh, ghost from the past within the contemporary technologies. So in this example, we brought uh, the ghost from the, the past of uh, satellite imagery and we recreated uh, some um, uh, rocket missile launches, uh, a few that were important historically from the first uh, to the first uh, uh, SCUD. Uh, this is the one we are looking at now, uh, a SCUD sent from uh, Kuwait to Saudi Arabia. And the idea was really to um, through the slick interface of the contemporary uh, tools, uh, bring back uh, the memory of uh, where those military uh, technology came from. Um, so it's reproduced in terms of uh, dynamic, speed, um, position, uh, uh, ballistic, uh, and moment in the day, basically. So it's like if um, camera will have been on board at the time.
Um, this next project that is um, inside the exhibition here um, is a blacklist. So we, we got interested in uh, how, um, how do we uh, somehow uh, decide uh, what should be um, visible or not uh, on the internet. And who decides uh, what those uh, forbidden sites or restricted sites are. So we started to um, investigate that and um, found a um, huge list of uh, providers uh, of those uh, blacklists. So we started to basically purchase uh, some of those uh, subscriptions and uh, looked into those listings. We compiled that in a, <coughs> a huge database. Um, so basically, um, you can find uh, many uh, companies providing that. Uh, it's basically a list that a system admin uh, can uh, uh, use, and then they, they will pick uh, the categories that they decide to block or to uh, uh, leave open. Uh, here you can see the main categories that are uh, in use. Uh, so obviously, uh, porn, piracy, uh, pharmacy, terrorism, and so on. But you can be also uh, surprised to see, for instance, feminism, uh, which is uh, clearly part of uh, the rules of this market, where uh, if enough of your clients request for a category to be blocked, um, it's going to be blocked. Uh, so it ended up in um, this kind of uh, physical uh, transposition in, um, into an encyclopedia. That is kind of a um, materialization of the database in a way. Uh, you can browse through it. Uh, you can see it as a, uh, as a wall. So it's a few millions of uh, websites. Uh, each uh, book is uh, 666 pages. <coughs> and there are certain, there are certain um, books. Uh, tuk, tuk, tuk. Yep. And the last project. Uh, so we were talking uh, about this idea of hidden sites. And on the other side uh, of the story, you have uh, somehow the, the tip of the iceberg. So what we could um, name hyperconnection and uh, the, the way that um, social media and filter bubble and um, all these uh, effects of uh, hyperconnection bring to our intellect and our ability to. Um, uh, to produce ideas. And we were kind of uh, surprised on how many projects lately uh, were uh, following the same trends and somehow taking similar shapes and uh, producing the same systems of value in a way. And we thought that at some extent it could be caricaturized and automatized. So we started basically um, to develop a, a system that will uh, look at uh, the main trends and the main concerns uh, on social media and uh, directly uh, short circuit uh, the ability of uh, those kind of uh, automated artist uh, um, reactions. Uh, the bot will uh, react in zero time to those new concerns and uh, produce uh, new potential um, artistic imaginaries. So it's a kind of a parody, but it's also somehow a way to um, extend uh, art imagination or art imaginaries a little bit outside of uh, the part of the ideal space that is usually occupied um, by um, artists. Um, so it works in a quite a, of a simple way. We um, we subscribe at the bot to uh, hundreds of news sources. So that's what what you can see uh, on the the left. Um, the bot uh, then looks for um, recurrent keywords and what is supposed to be uh, meaningful keywords in, in the titles, and then based on those keywords, it tries to categorize them as places. Um, uh, names, um, uh, verbs, and uh, pick a potential recipe to produce uh, new artistic uh, concepts out of it. Um, so this bot has been active um, on Twitter uh, since a few years and is now online as a um, website. Uh, where, 
uh, artists can uh, are free to to use and interpret um, those concepts. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty much done. 